Hi, my name is Joy Yvonne Jones. My monologue is from Antony and Cleopatra, Act 1, Scene 5. Uh, this is the moment where Cleopatra is talking about all of her epic lovers. And uh, the art piece I'm standing in front of is Tibetan Shrine Doors. And I thought that they were as epic and grand as Cleopatra is and, I, and how I imagine her palace to be. Oh, Charmian, where thinks thou he is now? Sits he or stands he? Does he walk or is he on his horse? Oh, a happy horse to bear the weight of Antony. Do bravely, horse, for what thou whom thou movest. The dimmy atlas of the earth, the arm and burgeonet of men. He's speaking now or murmuring. Where is my serpent of old Nile? For so he calls me. Now I do feed myself with the most delicious poison. Think on me that am with Phoebus amorous pinches black and wrinkled deep with time. But funted Caesar, when thou wast here above ground, I was a morsel for a monarch. Great Pompey would stand to make his eyes grow in my brow, and there would he anchor his aspect and die with looking on his life. Hi, my name is Sam Young, and I will be doing the Henry V speech from Act Five, Scene Two. In this speech, uh, the King Henry is trying to woo the Princess of France, Kate, uh, who is given to him by the French King. And I have chosen this piece, Return from the Promenade, uh, because it has this beautiful woman who is reluctantly sitting away from everybody, but still kind of interested. And by the end of the speech, she is wooed properly by the King. By mine honor, in true English, I love thee, Kate, by which honor I dare not swear as thou lovest me. Yet my blood begins to flatter me that thou dost, notwithstanding the poor and untempering effects of my visage. Now beshrew my father's ambition. He was thinking of civil wars when he got me. Therefore was I created with a stubborn outside, with an aspect of iron that when I come to woo the ladies, I fright them. But in faith, Kate, the elder I wax, the better I shall appear. My comfort is that old age, that ill layer up of beauty, can do no more spoil upon my face. Thou hast me, if thou hast me, at the worst. And thou shalt wear me, if thou wear me, better and better. Therefore, tell me, most fair Catherine, wilt thou have me? Put off thy maiden blushes, avouch the thoughts of your heart with the looks of an empress. Take me by the hand and say, Harry of England, I am thine. Which words thou shalt no sooner bless mine ear withal, and I will tell thee aloud. England is thine, Ireland is thine, France is thine, and Henry Plantagenet is thine, who, though I speak it before his face, if he be not fellow with the best kings, thou shalt find the best kings of good fellows. Come, thy answer in broken music, for thy voice is music, and thy English broken. Therefore, queen of all, Catherine, break thy mind to me in broken English. Wilt thou have me? Hello, I'm Sandra Moss. In the spirit of Shakespearean feminism, I will be performing Sonnet 130 today, which satirizes ideal beauty. And I am pairing the sonnets with this sculpture, 
Sri Devi, which epitomizes ideal beauty in the Hindu religion. And while this is an example of desired beauty, the subject of my sonnet is anything but. My mistress' eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done? If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses damasked red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go. My mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground. And yet, by heaven, I think my love is rare as any she belied with false compare. Hello, I'm Michael Rodriguez, and I will be performing the famous Bottom's Dream by Bottom from Midsummer Night's Dream. And I chose the Nymph of the Spring. And I chose the Nymph of the Spring for, I guess, very literal reasons. She's a nymph. Bottom would probably have just encountered a nymph or two and she looks so relaxed. She's sleeping. Perhaps she's dreaming. Maybe when she wakes up, she'll be as lively as bottom. That's why I chose the Nymph of the Spring. When my cue comes, call me and I will answer. My next is most fair Pyramus. <laughs> Peter Quince, Foot the Bellows Mender, Snout the Tinker, Starveling, God's my life, Stolen Henson left me asleep. I have had a most rare vision. I have had a dream, past the wit of man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if he goes about to expound this dream. He thought I was. There's no man can tell what. Me thought I was, and me thought I had. Oh, but man is but a patched fool if he will offer to say what me thought I had. The eye of man hath not heard. The ear of man hath not seen. Man's hand is unable to taste, his tongue to conceive, nor his heart to report what my dream was. I will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. And I shall call it Bottom's Dream, because it hath no bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and I will sing it at the latter end before the Duke. Peradventure, to make it the more gracious, I shall sing it at her death. Hi, my name is Tarika L.A. and I did sonnet number 18 and I chose the young shepherdess because she just kind of feels like she will be someone's like eternal summer love. Like she seems like she will hold a special place in someone's heart and then the, the country in the background just really kind of gave it this like 
romantic love type of feel. So I just felt she re went really well with the piece. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and oft is his gold complexion dimmed. And every fair from fair sometime declines by chance, or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest. Nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines of time thou growest. So long as man can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Hello, my name is Abigail Allwine, and this is Hercules the Archer by Antoine Bordeaux. Today I'm going to share with you a piece from Troilus and Cressida by William Shakespeare. Troilus is a young prince of Troy, and Cressida is from the opposing side. And in this piece, we find out if Troilus, in a public setting, will admit to their love. This piece is uh, really special here, and we thought it would be rather poignant to um, show alongside Troilus and Cressida because of the almost warfare-like state, especially the bow pulled at specific points in the monologue. We thought it was really helpful to um, support the action. Hard to seem one, my lord. But I was one with the first glance that ever... Pardon me. If I confess much, you will play the tyrant. I love you now, but not till now so much that I might master it. Oh, in faith, I lie. My thoughts were like unbridled children grown too headstrong for their mother. See, we fools, why have I blabbed? Who shall be true to us when we are so unsecret to ourselves? But though I loved you, I would you not. And yet, good faith, I wished myself a man, or that we women had men's privilege of speaking first. Sweet. Bid me hold my tongue, for in this rapture I shall surely speak the thing I shall repent. See, <laughs> see your silence, cunning in dumbness from my weakness, draws my very soul of counsel. Stop my mouth. 